TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it, YouTube. Little warning screen. You know what I'm saying? Give y'all a minute to read it if you need to. Um, don't forget twitch.com. The username is at the bottom of the screen. You know, give us a follow on there. Catch any of the live streams. Don't forget we do got merch and we got Patreon as well. Where we post five days a week. The link is in the description. This is Talk TV. Gangland Britain. Peter Blexley warns of organized crimes. Warns of organized crimes. Iron the grip on UK. All right. Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Uh -huh. In January 2022, Joe Dix, who was 18 at the time, was savagely stabbed to death by three young men, Benjamin Gill, Cameron Palmer, and Hans Bahari. The murder took place in the midst of a drugs and cash burglary, and a year later, at Norwich Crown Court, the men were sentenced to serve a term of a minimum 20 to 21 years each. When speaking to the press, Joe's parents, Emma and Phil Dix, said that their son was trapped in a vicious cycle when he was victimized by a gang who groomed him to sell heroin and crack and said that Joe almost lived a double life. In addition to grieving, we have silently coped with Joe's memorial garden being destroyed and multiple malicious communications via social media. Justice may have been served. However, there are no winners from knife crime. We will never get Joe back. The ripple effects from Joe's murder is huge, not only impacting on our family and friends, for everyone who knew Joe along the in the local community. A year later, in a revenge attack against the gang Only the Money who had murdered Joe, Alfie Hammett, also aged 18, shocked shoppers after he brutally attacked Raymond James Quigley, known as James, with fatal consequences in broad daylight. Hammett was jailed for 24 years last week. Accomplice Joshua Howell, who was 17 at the time of the murder, received 20 years. Following the tragic loss of young lives, Chief Constable Paul Sanford made a direct message to the public in an effort to reassure the local community. I'm recording this message today because I'm very aware of the concern that exists throughout Norwich about the recent homicide and other knife-related incidents that have occurred in recent weeks. I want to reassure you all that this is a number, the number one priority for our force and all available spare resources are being directed to these problems to bring offenders to justice. I also want to say that these are not random attacks. The risk of being victim of a violent crime if you're not part of these groups remains incredibly low. All of that being said, these are serious... I mean, that's true to an extent, but mistaken identity and maybe hitting civilians, crazy, so... I mean, it sounds good to say on TV to assure public safety, but, you know, that's not the reality of it, I don't feel. ...serious crimes, and we are absolutely committed to solving them and bringing the offenders to justice. Thank you. Since James Quigley's murder, Joe's parents, Emma and Phil, have described how Alfie Hammett often sent sympathetic messages, such as thinking of you, without realising he was a fellow gang member. They have shared their sadness that yet more parents will now have to go through the painful grief that they can so sadly relate to. In an effort to combat the escalating youth crime within Norwich, Joe Dix's parents, Emma and Phil, have created the Joe Dix Foundation in honour of their son. A 16-year-old boy was stabbed to death in loot. Joe Dix? Um, I want to say, man, Joe Dix, your parents are gonna be your parents no matter what. R.I.P. to you. 
But they said it themselves. It was almost like he was leading a double life. So, like, with that being said, your son was keeping stuff from you. You know what I'm saying? Your son, you say he got groomed. We, we will never know the truth. But no loss of life is worth any of things. But I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? I feel like your son knew what he was into. That that be my... like, And I say that in the most... <laughs> Heartfelt way, like, but I mean that, yeah. Last week, five teenagers were wounded in two shocking knife attacks there on the same day. This weekend, there was a triple stabbing in Halifax. Two young people. And they spawned for your son. The members spawned. They got the get back for them. The dead. So we, like, it. Are okay. One 21, the other just 19. Two members stabbed to death in Leeds. Barely a day passes without more of this bloodshed. And this is the kind of response we get every time. My number one priority, uh, and the thing that keeps me up at night, is oh, uh, safety of London. Now. So it's not just about policing. It's not just about stop and search. So that's fantastically oh, yeah. important. Cap. It's also about wrapping your arms around the kids and putting them on the right track. The death of anyone through an act of violence is an appalling tragedy. I want to say how shocked and saddened I am that three people have lost their lives. Just words, isn't it? Just word salad, putting arms around them. Is that going to stop kids stabbing each other? It's not, is it? We all know that. No. All the condolences and the talk of getting tough. The fact is the people who want to hurt us no longer fear the consequences if they do. Police numbers are down, budgets have been slashed. They've stopped taking everyday crimes even remotely seriously. When the Home Secretary announced last month that police must investigate all thefts, it was supposed to be a huge innovation. My question would be, what the hell were they doing before? Shoplifting is now out of control in Britain. Store thefts have more than doubled, and they're only getting worse. In America, it's the same issue. Emboldened by absurd policies on not prosecuting minor offenders, shoplifting, especially of the steaming variety, with dozens and dozens of shoplifters entering a store at one time, has become an epidemic. It's little wonder that... <laughs> Ah, that's not funny, but that is. Oh, my God. First and foremost, where did he get the TV Thousands from? That is entering a store. He immediately pulled this off the display. Especially of the steaming variety, with dozens and dozens of shoplifters entering a store at one time. has become an epidemic. Is it a you might as well get another one, buddy. Wonder that Donald Trump got an ovation for saying this. And we he fail twice? Is it a wonder that Donald Trump got an ovation over the weekend for saying this? And we the TV down. We will immediately stop all of the pillaging and theft. Very simply, if you rob a store, you can fully expect to be shot as you are leaving that store. There have always been horrible people. You know, it's very easy to look at the situation and say, oh, it's just because we've suddenly been giving birth to loads more horrible people. That obviously isn't the case. If we look at this, you know, just objectively, if we look at the facts, if we look at the statistics, the studies on what causes violent crime, the single biggest predictor across the board of levels of violent crime across time and space is inequality. Why? It's not just because people are poorer and they want, you know, to access more stuff. That is a problem. It's because in a society that denies particularly young men access to advancement, then violent crime becomes something of a status symbol. This is borne out across sociological studies across time and space. It becomes, you know, um, there's an incentive to kind of steal, uh, kill someone and to steal their trainers because the it becomes is, a status I, symbol. I, I, because we haven't got those roots for advancement for young men. Because, I mean, Tyrus touched on a point in saying that in third world countries, you don't necessarily have this problem because there are actual social consequences, which I think is an important point you touched on. When I was a kid growing up in Ghana, if you stole something in our neighborhood, it doesn't matter who, who finds out, whether it's your neighbor or someone else, once your, your family gets to know, there will be consequences. Yeah. Sometimes your neighbor might discipline you. The issue here is a breakdown of legal and social consequences, and that's what we're missing. I there agree, actually. Be, there, has, there has to be ostracization and actual social consequences for stealing, but there also has to be legal penalties, real ones that I are agree. actually terrifying. I mean, I've got to say, I have come round. I mean, Tara's <clears throat> talked about third world countries. You look at someone like Singapore. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I was hearing what she was saying, but the study of this, the study of that, the actual, like, okay. You ain't you not really from or been to any of these neighborhoods that you're talking about. You just looking, you reading papers. When she got to speaking, she just said she was from Ghana. 
the land was giving her repercussions and things of that nature. Okay, it hit a little bit different. Or Hong Kong. I, I, I walked the streets of these places at midnight, right? You just don't get this kind of stuff yeah. there because the penalties, if you do, are severe. And I keep being told by the wishy-washy brigade, Ava, look, you know, you, you, you can't be too tough on these kids. You've got to be... A, actually, why? No, why don't can't. we just say, right, the next time a young kid is caught with a knife on the street, they get 10 years in prison. I can tell you, it would soon stop. Well, and it, it may could. sound like I'm, I've, I've morphed criminals. into a right-wing hegbanger. I can assure you, most people in this country would share that sentiment. So why aren't we doing tougher things like that. What well, I don't know, the say? extreme of your argument is we turn into Saudi Arabia and then we just throw away anyone who might, you know, look like they're committing a crime or then we execute them. Which I'm not saying that. I'm talking about know. people Sorry, carrying a knife. With she just really put words in Pierce's mouth like that. They tend to use it argument. not for cutting up their your, cheddar cheese. And your point there about 10 years, well, we've got a prison system at the moment that doesn't work. It doesn't rehabilitate people. And at the moment, we are turfing people out. Sorry, we're throwing them into prison and they're coming out the other side and we are, mm. they're, they're not rehabilitating. They're going back to commit more so crimes. So how are you going to stop? How are you going to stop the well, kids stabbing I, I, I each think, other? I think it goes back to what Grace is. I think it's a social issue. I think that we've got to really tackle inequality. You know, we've got to look at this long term rather than thinking, what's the short term solution for everyone? Like, you know, lock everyone. You sound like the same people that he just named off in the, in the, in the thing. It's just all talk. Hang on, hang on. Okay, hang on. I'll come to you. Before we look, inequality seems to me, with great respect, one of those vacuous generic terms. Like a sort of catch-all excuse Pierce. for what is going on here. I know lots of kids who come from poor backgrounds who do not go around stabbing people Facts. because their parents, and this can apply, by the way, to, to uh, lower-class people, Say to middle-class people, it, to so-called upper-class people. I went to a fee-paying school till I was 13, then state uh, comprehensive school. Let's get I've back seen to all it. Say it. manner of people, right, and parents. The common theme of kids that behaved well or at least felt shame and accountability if they were caught doing bad things, was strong parenting. Yeah. Right? Teachers, yes, and authority, yeah. yes, but actually strong parenting. I've just, in research, conduct- 100%, I told y'all when we was watching a uh, wife swap yesterday, like, like I'm telling my kid off rip, the first time you do something wrong, you're getting punished to the top tier in the house because that's how it is in real life. And they're going to go out believing that. So if you're doing something bad in real life, stop because you're going to get punished severely. <laughs> That's the mind. Like, no, you got to curve it. Like, if you have no discipline at home, what makes you think your child's going to be disciplined outside? They're not. <laughs> ...by the UK Parliament in the year ending March 2023, there were 50,500 offences that year alone involving sharp instruments. Whilst the bombs might not be going off anymore, rest assured the gangs still operate and their grip on the criminality is an iron one, a vice-like grip, and they're not about to loosen it anytime soon. Who's this at the end? My name is Peter Blankstein. I'm a former Scotland Yard detective. The I, f I feel like we watched. Majority of my career was dedicated to tackling serious and organised crime. From London to Lancashire, and from Devon to Dundee. Where is this whole video at, man? Tell them leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.